Yo, what's up guys, it's Dan here from Custom Creations and it's our first tutorial in a long time. The channel has also been inactive for about three weeks because I was unmotivated to do fuck all. Couldn't be asked to do shit all but I've had two really nice edits come out in the last two days so I hope you like those. And I'm actually going to do an editing tutorial today which I haven't done before either and I'm going to show you how I did some things in the Smurfy edit. And the first thing I'm going to show you, I'll let you just watch here. is you saw that um, the shaking of the screen when the guy shoots and then also there's a little uh, white blow in when he shoots like it lights up so I'm just going to show you how to do that it looks a lot better with color correction as well and I'm also going to show you how to do this which involves the same concept of the uh, screen shake but also um, it's got a bit of blur involved this time and it's synced with the music now th you can do both these effects to snipe clips and you can do them to like ordinary cinematics as well they both work, even the blur works with the snipe clips and you saw that in the Taj so first of all we've got our clip here and you're going to start off with it at about 100%. Now, when you do the screen shaking, um, the likelihood is that like the position is going to all be changed, and like there's going to be parts of the clip where like it's off the screen. If you get me, it's just going to have a white background. So I suggest you put the scale at 105%, and then to make it better, do some like black bars at the top and bottom. So if you go lay a new solid. Make sure it's uh, 1280 by 720 and the colour is black and click OK. Then come to uh, this red dot here and then just move it up to about the right size, I'd say about that. And then you can just drag it up but make sure you hold down Shift because that will keep it in line. If you don't hold down Shift then you could have it over it. If you hold down Shift it will keep it in line. And then you can just drag up and then Control D to duplicate the clip. So duplicate the uh, object in the timeline, hold down shift and bring it down. So that's how you make the bars. Now the next thing we want to do is we're going to go along to when the guy shoots, which is about there. And we are now going to go layer new null object and then hit P on the keyboard, this null object, and then hit this little stopwatch here for position. And then go along about a second, maybe one and a half seconds. This is how long you want the shape to go on for. And then hit this little diamond here. Now you want to hold down shift and click this diamond. And the wiggler will come up here. If it's not here for you, you can go window and wiggler and it will come up. And then what you need to do is you need to put the frequency on 30 per second or if you're using 60 frames per second clips, put it on 60, but I'm using 30. And then put the frequency on about 7. So the magnitude on about 7. And this is how much like you want it to shake. If you have it more than 10, it's really unrealistic and bad. But I'd say about 7. And then you click apply. And then you've got loads and loads of keyframes here. And as you can see, when we're going through, it's not affecting, like it's not shaking at all. So what we need to do is we need to come to your clip. And then where it says parent, you need to hold down this hour and choose the null object, so null two. And then when you see you go through, it's shaking. And to do this for the second time he uh, shoots, I just highlight all of the keyframes, hit control C and hit control V where he shoots again. So it's just shaking the whole time. Now for the uh, white highlights come in, you need to go lay a new solid and choose a white this time and click OK. And then you need to line it up from where you first shoot, and you should already have this from no object, so it's about there. Then you need to go Alt and the square bracket on your keyboard. It's the square bracket closest to P, not the one closest to enter. Alt and the square bracket closest to P. That ends the clip there. And then where it says mode, or if you don't have this then you can right click around here and go column and modes 
and then you need to put this on overlay. And then if you T on the keyboard for opacity, you need to keyframe the opacity 100 percent by just clicking stopwatch. And then coming about to the end of where he uh, of where the shaking is and putting it on the at this point you can also go Alt and the square bracket close to enter to cut off the uh, clip. It's not necessary but it does help in keeping the, line, the timeline nice and clean. Then what we're going to do is going to hit white solid 3 or over 1 for you and go Control and D to duplicate the clip. So you duplicate that object in the timeline. Then drag it over to where he shoots again. And you can see now that it's shaking and it's white when he shoots. And I'll just quickly render this view so you can see what it looks like, and you see how quick and easy it is. So, there you go, it's shaking and it's got a white pillar, a white uh, highlight, a white shine. So, that really is that easy. Now, for the uh, advanced part of the tutorial, uh, adding in the blur and uh, making it look, I think, a lot better. Now, uh, I'm going to leave the null object in here because uh, you already know how to do that and you know how the shape was added. And what we're going to do is we're just going to delete it in there. And really, it's the exact uh, same principle and you're just adding one extra thing. It's, it's, it's nothing hard and it's really easy to do and achieves a, a, a fantastic effect, in my opinion. So what you're going to do is going to come down to a clip. Yours won't be a picture, but I just did a picture because I couldn't be really bothered to render the whole cinematic. Yours will be a clip. Let's come to the clip and then go effect, blur and sharpen, directional blur. And then on this clip, I've used the, di of the di ugh, direction of naught, as you can see, when the blur goes up. If you put the direction on about 90, you can see it goes sideways. I think 90 is better on actual clips, as in like when people are playing, but on cinematics it's better at normal. Now, if you didn't, if you don't know how to sync, um, sync the blurs with the music, I'm going to just show you that quickly as well. So let me just render this out, and then if you listen to the music. Okay, so um, you can see right here I've got two markers, which is where the beats come in. And basically, what you're going to do is let me just delete these markers and show you. Is you're going to uh, round preview the timeline, and then when the beat comes in that you want to sync it to, you're going to hit the little star on your keyboard. Now, this star on your keyboard is situated above the keypad so you've got the keypad one two three four five six seven eight nine and then above the nine is a star so it's by like all the arrows and the enter button and the backspace button that little number pad and above the nine is a little star and when the beat comes in you need to press that little star while you're listening to the round preview so i'll do it now hit hit and then you'll see the two markers come up We've got that uh, nice and synced, so we know where we're going to add in our blur. Now we're back to the directional blur, and what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in, and we're going to line up our red bar with our marker, and we need to put the blur length, and I suggest about 80. I need to keyframe this by clicking the stopwatch button, and then on this preview uh, little toolbar here toolbar here you need to press this button here which is the previous frame about three times one two three and then put the blur length on north and then you're going to scroll about a second later and put the blur length on north again if you now hit hit U on the keyboard while having your clip selected it'll bring up the directional blur um, or, or everything that's keyframed in your uh, clip so what we're going to do is just going to highlight all these keyframes, hit Control C, and hit Control V just before the second marker, and then it'll be nice and synced again. So let me just round preview this for you. Uh, 
and it's that simple. I hope this tutorial hasn't been too fast paced for you. I know it has been very fast paced because I can't be able to sit here for 20 minutes and explain something that's really, really actually quite simple. If it has been too speedy for you, let me know in the comment section and if you need any help, I'll try and help you in the comment section. Otherwise, you can just uh, go back to the start of the video and watch it again. One thing I didn't explain here is that uh, I've also got the screen shake um, synced up with the uh, music. So basically what I did is I did the usual screen shake with the position keyframe. And then what I did is I highlighted all my keyframes and I dragged it along to where the start of my marker is. And the start of my marker is here and dragged along the first keyframe to there, as you can see. So it's really not that hard, it's just a basic principle that you've got to learn. If you haven't done any editing before in your life, you're not really going to understand. But it's just a tutorial to let people know about the effect and how easy it is. Thank you for watching, and I've been Dan, and I'm out.